homicide detective on the Bundy Task Force, who later worked on the Green River Killer Task Force. I don't think I know about him, I confess. He teaches a seminar on serial killers here in Seattle. I've taken it twice, and I'm going to take it again in November. He's really, really good. She can see I'm both envious and impressed, and gloats just a touch as she sucks on her old gold. Okay, if you're so smart, I ask her. If you're such an expert on Ted Bundy, what was the name of the girl that Ted murdered, the one he was eventually executed for? Shannon stares across the table, remembering. She goes blank. What I don't know is that Shannon is accessing her photographic memory. I never knew anyone who had a true photographic memory, and to access it, her eyes go blank, as if reading a teleprompter inside her head. Kimberly Leach, 12 years old, Lake City, Florida? She asks, but it need not be a question. I'm stunned. Nobody ever gets that one right. This girl really knows her stuff. I can't help it. I lean into her and whisper, do you want to come to LA and be with me? Now she looks even worse, like I've just slugged her, completely vulnerable, like I'm holding out a golden carrot, intending to yank it away the minute she shows any interest. There's something about her that says she's used to having it all yanked away. She looks visibly pained, as if fighting off stabbing jabs of hope and dread, unable to decide which is more lethal. How do you know that I'm not some crazed stalker, she laughs, recovering with a quip, but I don't feel like giving her an easy way out. I want to let her know that I'm serious. I'm tired of her doubting me. I know. I always know. And so do you, I tell her. You find most people disappointing, boring, and small. No one holds your attention longer than a few moments, let alone an entire evening. You're absolutely... You're absolutely amazed at how tedious most people are. You're just like me, and when you finally meet someone else, you know. She turns away, blushing, as if to make my point. The other girls at the table continue with their questions about please kill me, unaware they serve as perfect exclamation points. Does Iggy Pop really have a big cock? Is Dee Dee Ramon really as crazy as he seems? Do you think Sid really killed Nancy? While I'm busy answering them, Shannon sits there quietly, refusing to look at me. Finally, after a long moment, she looks at me and says, I have to go. You can't go, I tell her. Shit, I've blown it. I should have just lied, said something charming. Talk about coming on too strong. She looks extremely uncomfortable. I have to go home and walk my dog, Riley, she says, getting up, buttoning her sweater and zipping up her jacket. I have to think fast. I can't just let her walk out on me again. Now she's adjusting her beret. Oh, is she ever cute. I pick up the penthouse galleys of the John Holmes article and write my cell phone number on the top of the page with a note telling her she has to call me the moment she finishes reading it, tonight. You really want me to read it, she asks, without any faith that I'd be interested in her opinion. She really doesn't believe me, not only about coming to LA, but everything I've said. It's got the part with the murders, I tease her. And Shannon laughs at how obvious I am, and how obvious it is she wants to read it. Joe and I only have read the first half of the Wonderland Avenue murder story at the reading, just up to the mur murders. We left it a cliffhanger, and I think the real reason Shannon agreed to, go, agreed to go for a drink with me was to find out what happened in the story. Come on, you know you want to finish reading it, I needle her. And she laughs, staring at staring staring me straight in the eyes, and for a brief second, she looks like she likes me, delighted what I, that I've figured out what will make her pause. It probably won't be until much later, she says, taking the galleys. Oh, thank God. That's okay. I'll be driving all night, I say. Call me as late as you want. Shannon thinks for a moment, seriously considering my offer, then agrees to it. We shake hands. She says goodbye to Jillian over at the other table, and I watch her walk out the door, desperate to follow her outside, pull her into a doorway, and kiss her.